is what I know, that we can all get to that place in our life where sometimes we feel as if we're stuck. We can get to that place in our lives in which we feel as if we're, where we're coming back from behind. We can get to that place in our lives where we feel as if we're not positioned to win. We can get to that place in our lives where we start feeling frustrated, where we know that we know that something inside of us is saying that there's got to be more than this. So the question is, when you get to that place, when you're frustrated, when you know that you could be doing more, when you know that somehow, some way you've fallen behind, when you know that you're out of position, when you know that you need to turn the situation around, the question is, when you get in that place, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? If you're a note taker, I want you to write this down. And I'm going to say this over and over again, and I want to make sure this registers. When you get in that place where you know you got to turn your situation around, when you get in that place where you know you need some momentum, when you get in that place in which you feel stuck, what do you do? You make a play. Write that down. You make a play. And so what does it mean to make a play? It means to do something, take some type of action, make a move, something that's going to turn your situation around, that you make a play so that somehow, some way you can get out of this debt. You make a play so that some way, somehow you can save your marriage. You make a play so that somehow, some way you can put yourself in alignment with your goals, with your dreams, with that thing that you've been called to do. You make a play so that now you're in the position to win. You know, here's what I know, that any organized sport, whenever a coach is standing on the sideline, if the coach has the right level of consciousness, if the coach has the right mental attitude, when the coach sees that the team is behind, when the coach sees that, that, that the momentum has shifted to the opponents, when the coach realizes that there's a high probability now that they're no longer in position to win, the coach will call a timeout. And all the, the team members will huddle around the coach. And somewhere along the line, all great coaches will take the time to look everybody in the eye. And at some point, the coach is looking and the coach will say this. Listen, we're behind right now on our promises. We're behind right now on doing the things that we were called to do. We're behind right now. And maybe you know what that's like to be behind right now in your debt, to be behind in your relationship, to be behind on your goals and your dreams. And so that coach will look around and say, listen, we're behind. The momentum is not in our favor. We're not positioned to win. And so what the coach would do is he or she would look in everybody's eyes and would say this, I need somebody who's going to step up. I need somebody who's going to go above and beyond. I need somebody who's going to use sheer will to make a play. I need someone to make a play. Because the coach understands that once you make a play, a significant play, the momentum shifts back in your favor. Once you make a play, you open opportunities for more plays. Once you make a play, you can go from the place of looking like you're going to lose, and now you can position yourself to win. And so here's what I know. You're going through this thing called life. And you're trying to play this game. And you feel as if you're in a position where you're playing from behind. You're feeling as if you're stuck. You're feeling as if you just can't win. You're feeling as if things just aren't going in your favor. That there's a player, a certain player that you've got to go stand in front of the mirror and look at. And when you stand in front of that mirror, you need to look that player right in the eye. And you need to say to yourself, I need you right now to make a play. You got to make a play so that you can get out of this debt. You got to make a play so that you can take this business to the next level. You got to make a play so that you can save this marriage. You got to make a play so that you can finally live your goals and your dreams. Make a play. And so why is it then? Why is it that when we know we're in that situation and we know that it's time to make a play, that we don't act, that we don't move forward, that we don't take massive action to make something happen? And so here's what I honestly believe, because I know I've been there. 
that sometimes when we know in our heart that we need to make a play, that sometimes we don't act. And the reason why we don't act is because we're waiting for the perfect timing. We're waiting to have the right contacts. We're waiting to have the right amount of money in our bank account. We're waiting for the kids to leave the house and go off to college. We're waiting to, to make sure that, that, that we have written a book or that we have the right accolades. That we're waiting for somebody to tell us yes. We're waiting for somebody else to encourage us. But here's what I realize. That when it's time to make a play, there's no such thing as perfect timing. The perfect time is right now. And so I know. I know. Even when you know that the time is now. There's a part of you, you start talking yourself out of it. Yeah, there's a part of you that says, that I don't know if I can do this. There's a part of you that's saying, I need more resources. I need more contacts. I, I, I just got to wait another year. I just got to wait another two years. I know because I've been there. Yeah, I, I remember being in corporate America and, 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 and realizing that it was time to make a play. Realizing that although I was working for a great firm and I was working in the field in which I got my degree, I was working as an accountant, as a CPA, I knew that I needed to make a play. I knew as I was waking up and I was fighting traffic and I was getting to that job, I knew that something inside me was saying, Andy, there's got to be more, man. Andy, you got to make a play. And even though I knew that, I started having conversations inside. I was waiting for the perfect timing. I said, I just need to get this amount of money in my bank account. I, I, I just got to make sure that the workload at the job is it, it's, it's at the perfect place so that I can leave with a seamless exit. I, I, I just got to make sure, too, that I have things lined up. That, that, that I'm prepared when I get out there and I make a play. I have something else out there that's waiting on me. But guess what? There's no such thing as perfect timing. That at some point I had to say, Andy, make a play. Make a play. The things aren't going to be perfect. You can't wait for your bank account to be exactly where you want it to be. You can't wait to ensure that everybody around you is going to support you. You can't wait to, for that other person to make the play. No, you've got to make a play. And so in December of 2004, I made a decision. I said, I'm making a play this month, this month. And I walked into the office of the HR lady, and I said, I'm, 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 I'm getting out of here. And I tell you, when I look back at my life, that's probably one of the most significant plays I ever made. Because I made that play, you're listening to this voice right now. Because I made that play, I was able to get myself in alignment with my goals and my dreams. Because I made that play, I avoided being in a situation where 10, 15, 20 years from now that I look back and I say, what if, what if I would have decided to take a chance on myself? What if I would have tapped into this ability to, to speak and inspire and touch people's lives? What if I would have just made the play? And so I'm grateful that I didn't wait for the perfect timing. I'm grateful that I didn't wait for everything to be perfect. And so here's what I say to you, that right now is your time to make the play. Don't worry about having everything all together. Don't worry about having the right contacts. Don't worry about having the right thing in your bank account. Don't worry about your age. Don't worry about the kids moving out. Don't worry about who's supporting you and who's not. No, make the play and make it now because your life depends on it. Because the only way that you're going to turn this game around, it's the only way that you're going to get out of debt. It's the only way that you're going to save your marriage. It's the only way that you're going to put yourself in alignment with your goals and your dreams. It's the only way that you're going to take this thing that you're doing right now to the next level. You've got to make a play and you've got to make it right now. And so here's what else I know. That the most significant plays that we can ever make the ones that create the biggest results, the ones that turn the game around, the ones that change the legacy of your last name, the ones that change the landscape of your life, those plays, they happen with a sense of urgency. 
that no, you can't be casual about making those plays. You know, as my mentor, Jim Rohn, he says, you can't be casual about your goals and dreams. Why? He said, because you'll end up a casualty. Casualness leads to casualty. So you have to have a sense of urgency. And let me tell you something. People who are phenomenal, people who make great things happen, they understand that. Great companies understand that. That's why most direct sales companies, multi-level marketing companies, they normally have some type of significant bonus for anybody who gets involved in the business and does something within the first 30 days. Why do they do that? Because they know that they need the people to make a significant play. Because they know that they got the people to take massive action. They know they need the people to start talking about the business, start telling people about their products and services. And they understand this one rule, this one law that most of us fall victim of. It's called the law of diminishing intent. Well, what does that mean, Andy? What it means is this. When you say that you're going to do something and that you intend to do something, like write the book, and you intend to do something, like start the business, and you intend to do something, like spend more time with your family, that you intend to do something, grow in your spirituality, that you intend to do something to make a career change, that you intend to do something to go back to school, that the longer you take to move forward, the longer you take to take action, the longer you take to do the thing that you said you were going to do, the greater the likelihood that it will never happen. That's the law of diminishing intent. The law of diminishing intent is all about urgency. You know, one of the things, and we're family here, I can share this. One of the things that I can tell you I get all the time. That when I get an opportunities and I go out and I speak in front of different audiences and I get in front of different groups and I have these calls and teleseminars and coaching sessions, there'll be people that, that, that send me an email. There'll be people that come up and have a conversation and they tell me about something that they want to do or something that they want to participate in. They'll tell me, hey, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Enriquez, listen, you, that was amazing. That was awesome. I, I, I want to be part of your coaching program. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sign up for your coaching program. I tell them just how to do it. They say, I'm going to do it. Here's what I know. Nine out of ten times, I can count them out. When I tell somebody, hey, listen, get this book, and I see them a week later, and they still haven't gotten the book, nine out of ten times, they'll never get the book. When I see somebody who says, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to make this phone call. I know that if it's a week later and they haven't done it yet, nine out of ten times, they'll never do it. Why? It's the law of diminishing intent. You said you're going to do something, but you didn't have any sense of urgency. You weren't urgent about making the play. And so I remember one time. When I, I, I had somebody around me who understood the law of diminishing intent. I had somebody around me that, that was a little crazy. They said that, you know, crazy people are the ones who tend to do something amazing. And I was, I was in college at the time. I was getting my master's in, in accounting. And one of the things that most people, just about everybody who's part of the accounting program that's getting their master's, most of the time, a couple years after graduating, most of them will go ahead and try to hit the epitome of the profession by becoming a licensed CPA. And so there's one of my classmates who understood the importance of being urgent, one of my classmates that understood the importance of making a play, one of my classmates that understood that when you want to break away from the rest, that there's got to be a sense of urgency. She did a little bit of research, and here's what she found out. She found out that we were all in school in the state of Florida, at Florida State University. She did some research, and what she found out is in order for us to take the CPA exam in the state of Florida, we would have to graduate first, from our master's program in order to be able to take the exam. But she did some research and she found out in the state of Georgia, the rule was a little bit different. In the state of Georgia, we could take the exam as long as we were going to complete the credit hours within a certain amount of months after taking the exam. And so since most of us were in the middle of the master's program, that we would meet that requirement a couple of months later. So she came up with this crazy idea and we thought she was insane. 
She said, here's what I'm going to do, and I want to know who's with me. She says, I'm going to schedule to take the CPA exam in the state of Georgia in three months. And we looked at her like she was crazy. We were already under a crazy workload. We were getting our master's. We're looking at her. Is she insane? She says, no, this is what I'm going to do. We said, well, you can't do that. She says, yes, I can. It's different in the state of Georgia. I can take the exam, and as long as I fulfill the requirements within a certain amount of months, the exam scores count. And I said, but what about the state of Florida? She said, when you're done, you can transfer your scores to the state of Florida. And I said, but what about your workload? She says, I don't care. I'm going to burn the clock. I'm going to make this thing happen. And so at first we thought she was crazy, but, but after a while we said, man, she, 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 she is crazy. And then we said, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and join her. And so six of us were crazy enough to join her. And six of us were willing to have a sense of urgency. Six of us were willing to get uncomfortable. Six of us were willing to pay the price along with her. And here's what it looked like. We would wake up early in the morning. We would get together and study from like 6 to about 8.30 in the morning. And after 8.30, most of us would have class from 9 all the way till about 5 o'clock. We'd take about a two-hour break to eat and loosen up. We'd meet back together at 7 o'clock. We'd go from 7 o'clock to about 11 o'clock p.m. until the library was shut down. Once the library was shut down, we'd get in our cars and we would drive to one of our homes and we would study again for all the way until about 2 o'clock in the morning. We did that for two and a half months. Urgency. But here's what happened. We made a monster play. Here's what happened. We all got in the car when that day came. And we didn't think in a million years we'd be able to pull it off. But because we had a sense of urgency, because we were willing to pay the price, because we were willing to get uncomfortable, we drove up to Georgia. We sat down. We took that exam. We waited for those scores to come back, and we passed. We took those scores to the state of Florida. And upon graduation, and upon meeting the requirements, we all became licensed CPAs. And so I didn't realize the magnitude of what we did until I started working for my firm. And it was about my second week working for the firm. And I remember sitting there, and there was somebody who had been with the firm now for about four years. And I was looking at her, and she was stressed out. And I said, well, why are you so stressed? And she looked over at me. She says, I'm stressed because right now I'm preparing for the CPA exam. She's like, you know, by being a licensed CPA, we get more credibility in the company. She said, by being a licensed CPA, you know, we get a higher pay rate. You know, by being a licensed CPA, you separate yourself from everybody else who's just a regular account. I said, I know. She says, really? She says, don't worry. One day you're going to have to study like this too, Andy. It's not easy, especially when you're still working. I said, well, I don't have to worry about that because I'm already a CPA. She said, what? I said, I'm already a CPA. Yeah. I've already separated myself from the rest. I've already paid the price. I've already did what you're doing right now. And so now I got clarity to see what's the next move. And so here's what I say to you, that right now, whatever your play is, you have to have a sense of urgency. That's why we give ourselves deadlines when we are trying to achieve our goals. That's why companies have end-of-the-month bonuses. Why? Because they want the employees to kick it up a notch. They want their sales crews to make more phone calls. They want their sales crews to push harder. They want their employees to increase their activity. They know that when you have a sense of urgency, you can make a bigger play. When you have a sense of urgency, the book that's been in you for 10 years, you can write it in six months. When you have a sense of urgency, this business that you've been trying to take to the next level and you weren't able to do it for the past two years you can do it in six months when you have a sense of urgency and you've been living a life now for 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years 60 years and you've never ever done that thing that you know in your heart that you've been wanting to do that you've been meaning to do that you can start doing that thing tomorrow when you have a sense of urgency because that's what's required to make a play and so not only is there no such thing as perfect timing? Not only do you have to make sure 
that you're moving with a sense of urgency. What's important is once you've made a play, once you've made a play, what's important for you to realize is that you've got to keep your eyes open and say to yourself, what's the next play? You see, nothing kills greatness faster than somebody who makes a play and then gets comfortable. Somebody who makes a play and then starts resting on their laurels. Somebody who makes a play and then you never hear about them again. You've heard of those people. We call them one-hit wonders. When we're talking about great songs, you know those songs that come out. Somebody comes out, they're talented, they come out with one great song, one great hit. It gets played on the radio over and over and over again, and then they end up on one of the Oprah shows, Whatever Happened to Such and Such. What happened to them? I'll tell you what happened to them. They made a play, and then they got, a, they got comfortable. They made a play, and they weren't looking to say, what's the next play? They made a play, and they weren't willing to stretch themselves. They made a play, and they took a hit, and they never got back up from the hit. So once you make your play, you got to say to yourself, what's the next move? Once you make your play, you got to say to yourself, now, what am I going to do next? So you wrote that book. That's great. That's great. That's awesome. Now, what's next? Are you going to write another book? Are you going to go and, and start doing interviews? Are you going to start doing coaching sessions and talks around your book? So you finally got out of debt. That's great. That's great. Now, what's next? Are you going to start investing? Are you going to start workshops and seminars to teach other people how to get out of debt? And so finally, finally now, you, you find a way to turn your relationship around. That's great. But what's next? Now what? What else can you turn around? Can you turn your business around? That's awesome. Can you turn your health around? That's great. What's the next play? You see, here's what I know. Once you make a play, and that's why when that coach brings everybody into the huddle, and the coach looks everybody in their eyes. And when you look at yourself in the eye and you say to yourself, make a play, the beautiful thing that every coach knows is once you make a play, you open the door for other plays. Once you decide to write that book and you make that thing happen, you open up all kind of new doors. Now you have new recognition, new contacts, new exposure. One play leads to another. That once you find a way to get out of debt and now you can think clearly, you're not struggling. You're not coming up with excuses on why you can't invest in yourself. You're not coming up with excuses on why you can't afford to buy a book or afford to be part of a coaching session or afford to fly to a workshop or a seminar or afford to go back to school or afford to keep your lights on. Once you are out of debt now and once you can think and once you have your clarity, now all of a sudden you start seeing all the different places that are available to you. Once you make a play and you find a way to invest in your relationship and now you have happiness again. Now this person that you're laying next to, this person that you fell in love with, this person that you made an oath with, once again now they're your friend. And now, now that your relationship is on the right note, now you can make another play because emotionally you're stable. Now you can see opportunities. Now your energy level is where it needs to be. Now you can see the other play. Yeah, you got to make a play. And so here's what I know. I know that we all get to that place in our life. We say, man, I feel a little stuck. And we, we get to that place in our life where we say, I, I, I need something to change. We, we get to that place in our life where we say, it, it, it just doesn't feel as if I'm in a position to win. And so what I want to remind you of is this, that, that, that when you get in that situation, and we will all be there at one time or another, that you've got to go stand in front of the mirror, you've got to look that person in the mirror, and you've got to say to yourself, make a play. Make a play. There's no such thing as perfect timing. Make a play and have a sense of urgency. Make a play, and when you're done, say to yourself, what's the next play? Why? Because you'll never, ever be a one-hit wonder. Why? Because you understand that you've got to stretch and you've got to grow. Why? Because you understand that life is about going from one play to the next. Make 
a play. This has been Andy Henriquez reminding you to always show up for your life. Because if you don't, if you don't, ladies and gentlemen, no one else will.